Right folks, so welcome back to another video. We are in the R32 today and we are going to be doing, as the title suggests, a few mods that will sort of modernise the car, you could say. So, we've got a lovely diffuser that will be fitting. Uh, this is an Ingo Nok diffuser. They've got this RCD330. And in there, we have some very nice and quite rare Vallejo rear tail lights. I'll unbox it in a second. I know it's been a while. Well, there's a spider on my lens. I know it's been a while since we've done like a DIY video on the Mark Fires. I thought these kind of videos be good because I know it's all locked down now. So you're probably looking for stuff to do on your car. These few bits can transform the whole thing. This head unit is actually off my Edition 30. I never did a video showing the install because it wasn't really justified. So I thought when I put it into this thing, it'd be good. Because look at the one that's in there currently. It's just this really basic nav and it's just all battered i mean look at the buttons on it now another thing that i've had done off camera is i've had the r32 quietened down as you guys know the previous video was me showing the straight pipe you fitted i've actually gone the complete opposite now because i'm keeping the car i want to drive it a bit more casually and until i could do something more serious with it i just want to enjoy it for what it is so literally put a full stock r32 exhaust in it now it wasn't actually this quiet when i first had it it always had a res delete so and the flapper mod, so it was always quite loud. Look at that. It's just fully peaceful, man. Can't even hear it. I'll blip it a bit, it's already a bit warm. In my opinion, that's perfect for just driving around. I am enjoying just using this car like a normal car. So in terms of the head unit, I think we'll begin with that because that's the easiest thing. Now the RCD 330s, there is one question that I know some of you lot will have and that is does it drain your battery? Now to give you an idea of how I prepare for these videos, I have gone ahead and already fitted the RCD 330 and then took it back out for the video. So I had it installed, that exact head unit in the car for about a week. This is an 06 R32 so um it's likely got the older canvas and i had no battery drain because i had an extra cable um the cable is this one here so i'm assuming this well this is the adapter you normally buy for your multifunction steering wheel uh this car doesn't have it but i have read somewhere that this extra bit is like a canvas simulator so this was in the car for a whole week and the battery was fine so I assume it's the cable doing that. Right, let's turn the car off. I'll keep it a few more revs before I do that. Can't be a VR, man. Turn that thing off. Right, make this thing easier. Put the steering wheel back. We'll give you a little DIY. This is like a little speed run, you could say. As I say, that nothing happens. All of this is a bit loose. As you can imagine, I've done this a few times. Right, so this stuff is normally held in with T20s. There's normally one there. And there's normally two there as well with those two little bits. Yeah, be careful with these. You can break them. Apologies if you are cringing right now. There we go. Trim piece. And here we are. So you got four T20s. Typical Mark V, the whole thing's put together with T20s. The COVID lockdown haircut's in full flow. Right, so that's all loose. It should just slide forward after you've taken the um, four of these off. There's normally two extra ones there as well, holding the trim on. And there we have it, old crusty head unit. Does the job to be fair, radio, stuff like that. I ain't gonna complain too much, but in these builds, I don't really like having basic stuff. And the minimum you need in 2020 is Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it does have that. So let's put this on the floor somewhere. As you can see, the RCD330 has all the usual buttons, radio, media. This doesn't have navigation, uh, but you won't need it because you can connect your phone up to it. You've got USB, AUX, and SD card if you're still using SD cards. In the box, it will come with this single pin to dual pin radio antenna. And then the connection, as you can see from the car, goes straight to it. but what I've fitted is this extra cable, which is normally for your multifunction buttons. I am going to put a link to both of the things in the description. The prices have gone up recently due to, I don't know, maybe Corona. Um, so what you want to do is you want to buy the RCD330 no-name variant. There's a Desay variant and all these crazy things. But yeah, it's directly off AliExpress. 
Uh, follow the links that I've got in the description and make your life a lot easier instead of doing your own research. I've already done that for you. Yeah, so what you do, you connect that straight into the adapter end and you connect these two into these pins. So there we go. So just to show you as well, it does work with CarPlay. I've got it connected by USB to my iPhone. It's all touchscreen as well. It's very responsive. All right, got a helicopter. It's probably coming for us. Right, and there we have it all fitted back up. Same trim, everything's all exactly as it was. Apologies about the poor fit mob there. I need to just give that a few wax, but I need to get on with the rest of this stuff before it gets dark. Right, folks, so if you are enjoying the video so far, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. We are getting close to the 100K mark, so it'd be nice for you to go ahead and do that. Drop the video a thumbs up if you are finding it useful so far, and let me know what other bits you want to see in the car. Let's get on to the other more exciting bits, you could say. I don't know, I found that pretty exciting. Yeah, let me get the tail lights out, and I'll show you exactly what's going to be happening to the rear end of this car. Right, so here we are sometime later. You can tell this has come straight from Germany and it looks it's like a million boxes within a box. It's so well packaged. So these are Vallejo LED tail lights. These are actually OEM Volkswagen lights. They were never sold or given as an option on UK cars. You can just tell they're really fancy looking. So I believe the only thing that needs to be addressed on these is swapping the fog and the reverse light over. So on the EU spec, you've got the fog light on the left and the reverse light on the right. On the UK, you've got the opposite, as you can see. So I'm not going to be doing any of that in this video. I believe we've got to separate the lens and stuff like that. But yeah, we'll just get them fitted today, see how they look. So I did purchase them new off a website called Autodoc. They don't always come into stock. They are quite, well, sometimes they're rare, sometimes they're not. I know a lot of people online like to call them rare, but sometimes there's just like an influx of stock. So yeah, if you can pick them up, I paid around 250 uh, generally they're around 250 to 300 pounds right now i'm pretty sure they're going back up again the diffuser is also from germany it's an ingo nok diffuser it is essentially a big piece of plastic isn't it but it's got this tag here right so i'm not going to spend too much time showing you exactly how to take the rear bumper off because there's so many diy videos on these cars online so main gist of it is you want to take the rear light off anyway so it's kind of convenient you're gonna to have to take those off there's a clip there's another one down there as well i'm sure that once those are off we'll be able to see the t20s along there and there's a bunch of t20s along there literally when i said earlier that this whole car is put together with t20s i wasn't joking so and yeah i'll basically skip to that in three two one right so here we are sometime later it was a bit of a faff i was just trying to sort of release the bumper from all the clips because i had everything unscrewed and look at this you just got a bunch of like zip ties and wires i don't even know what's going on here probably explains why the number plate lights a bit dodgy but yeah it's resistors and whatever okay that's normal figured it out just remember this car's parking sensors that's why there's wires everywhere and whoever zip tied the base is zip tied every wire together so it just looked like some bodged mess this one just popped out but we'll leave it there or whatever if he wants to chill there can chill there it's actually much easier than i thought i mean look they just unscrew the parking sensors don't have to well usually when i pull stuff it just breaks so a lot easier see i can still do diy stuff i remember the last time we did something extensive on this car was a headliner uh, we are going to get some leather seats in here soon new door cards go to town on it maybe some new clocks as well that sort of stuff isn't as well the seats aren't as difficult uh the dashboard i uh, will see i'll probably just gut it and just start it from scratch but here we are r32 rear end with nothing on it Pretty interesting to be fair. Should I drive around like that? All right, so it looks like this has just got a bunch of clips on here. I'm saying that, but it's probably gonna be a lot more difficult than what I'm saying. So this bit here separates from the rest of bumper. I've been told that you have to cut all of this off. Give it a try now anyway, see if it actually fits on. Maybe I haven't got the only one that fits, who knows? I mean, if we take this over, I mean, that's how it's gonna sit almost. So it'll be like quite aggressive just thinking i'll fit right so it looks like we are gonna have to cut off this bit here where essentially it wraps around the exhaust in the middle and um, i've taken this heat shield off so i don't have to cut through that unfortunately though i am probably gonna have to use a saw for angle grinder they realize it doesn't come with a disc i know rookie mistake I don't normally like using cutting tools, I don't know, I just don't like them. It's just thin plastic, so theory should be okay. Yeah, it's cutting quite easy. Well, I say that now. Probably it'll take me about 10 minutes. 
you know what, we'll put a time lapse on this. Right, so just pausing the montage to bring in the big boy. All right, so I sawed this all off so it's semi straight. I mean, my first saw wasn't too great. That's why I bought the big boy. Cutting DIY, the first thing we've cut on the channel. Let's try and get this diffuser mounted. See what's what. Imagine if it doesn't fit after all this. Right, so it's kind of mounted, but it doesn't seem to have any more clips than uh, the original factory one, so. Right, so I don't really see any way you can actually screw in. They've given a bunch of screws and bolts and whatever they are. Can't you really see where would be the best place to do it? Because that's the top there, so you wouldn't want to do it there. And because it kind of comes out here, you're not really, I mean, you're not going to screw anything flush there, are you? So it's a bit of a tricky one. Well, I'm thinking I'll leave that there for a sec. Let's get the Vallejo lights in. We have an easy thing to do. I'm going to get those in before we run out of sunlight. Let's put the hazards on. Look how quiet it is even after all that time. There we go. LED rings. Right, so it got dark. I don't know if you can actually see much right now. I've got the lights on. I'm probably gonna have to show most of it tomorrow once the day comes back but yeah I put the Vallejos on before I know I showed you in the previous shot because I was figuring out a way to do that and then I realized after I figured that out I'm gonna take them back out because the bumper needs to sit right there the T30 so here's the diffuser ended up screwing it in So, got them along there. Just a little insight of what goes into the videos. Normally, not everything makes it into the uh, video, but I thought I need to show the behind the scenes today. So, what I'll do, I'll get this all fitted back together in the dark and I'll show you the car tomorrow in the daylight. Right, so there we have it, the R32 all complete. Ended up going for screws, so there's two up there somewhere. You probably won't be able to see them, but there's two going upwards, and then I've got some along the sort of sides there. They don't poke through, so you can't see them, but I'll be honest, the diffuser is a bit of a mystery. They kind of just send you it, and like they don't send no like instructions. There's no clips like the factory one, so it is pretty poor on their part, especially when it's what best part of 180 pounds, it's a piece of plastic at the end of the day. Exhaust tips don't look too bad. I think next on the agenda is a nice faded window tint. Nothing too silly like a, a classy one because it's just fully clear glass at the minute. It has got that original blue Mark V glass. But yeah, it's all red and black now, isn't it? Inside, RCD 330 is looking good. But yeah, what we'll do, we'll end the video here. It has dragged on a bit longer than I wanted it to due to unforeseen difficulties. It's all part of DIY, isn't it? Yeah, make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you want to see more content. Drop the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it or find it useful. And yeah, stay tuned for the next video. You never know which car it's going to be. But yeah, take care.